All right, so within here, we can choose um, to select a minimum edge angle and a maximum edge angle. And you'll see when I had minimum selected, it's choosing those primitives where the uh, minimum edge angle for those primitives is uh, 20. And the maximum, when we turn that on, because it's the same, we're not going to collect anything. And because our sphere is very uniform in shape, I'm going to go ahead and place down a mountain noise first, as this will give us a little bit more variation to work with. All right, so taking a look at this, you can see now we're collecting our uh, primitives based on the minimum and maximum edge angle. All right, we can change those values within there. And if we come down to this edge angle uh, here, you'll see that it's going to require for edge groups only. So let's go ahead and change our group type to edges. And again, we can still group our minimum and uh, maximum edge angle. When we toggle this on, it's gonna. What it's gonna do is it's gonna use the angle between edges instead of the primitives to calculate this. So now, if we manipulate this value a little bit more, uh, here we go. We've got uh, another scope at which we can group our edges as well. Now, switching those off, we also have the option to group by the edge length instead of the edge angle. So we can turn this uh, maximum edge length up a little bit, and if we just go slowly we'll see some that start to come within range and again because our sphere is still uh, is still fairly uniform in terms of its primitive uh, shapes we we don't have a, a really large range to work with but here you can see that we've grouped based on the maximum edge length and we can also change the minimum as well to refine that group even further and coming down again we've got this edge depth here and you'll see that it's requiring uh, point groups so we'll Go ahead and turn our minimum and maximum edge lengths off and switch to point groups. And when we turn this on, it's going to uh, reveal two parameters for us. The first is edge depth and the next is the point group. So the point group is working very similarly to how our base group was working earlier. So we've got point number zero that's being grouped at the moment here. And what our edge depth is going to do is as we increase this number, it's going to move out uh, our selection of points in a sort of uh, edge loop radius so at the moment we've got one edge depth and we can increase this and decrease this and you'll see as we do that we're selecting more points out from our original point group all right and we'll turn that off and for this next section the unshared edges we're going to go ahead and select that but we first need to place down a blast node in order to see this effect All right, and I'm gonna select this uh, selection tool and grab, let's see, we'll grab about half and then a few uh, sort of more random selections on this side as well. All right, and hit enter for that. All right, and now when we take a look at our group, you'll see that we've got some points that have been grouped and what they're doing is that they're grouping based on uh, their sort of proximity to the edge of this geometry where there is a cut and where they're no longer connected with uh, the majority of the the uh, edges within this uh, piece of geometry. So you'll see here we don't have the points selected, but around our edges, around these holes, and as well as this big large intersection here, we have those points selected. Uh, now we also have a create boundary groups icon. So if we come down here and we turn on our groups and we take a look at our points, you'll see that we've got our group test, which is these unshared edges, and we can also create a group boundary um, as well. And you'll see that what it's done is it's selected based on the boundaries that are separate from each other. So we've got our group test, which is all of our points, group zero, which as you see is highlighted blue, is this larger section here. And then these other sections, one, two, and three, are these smaller holes that we've created in our geometry as well. Okay, so I'm just going to hide that visualizer, and there's one other thing that we want to go through uh, as well. Right at the top of this node, you may have noticed there was an initial merge uh, value as well. And taking a look, we've got replace, union, intersect, and subtract. And so those work very similarly to a Boolean node, if you're familiar with the process of a Boolean. So if we go ahead and duplicate this node by clicking Alt and dragging it down, all right, and we select our group test, and I'm going to... Uh, rename this one to group test but because we're using the our nodes uh, we can't actually use the OS function because our nodes need to be different so instead I'm gonna name it in here group test all right 
and it's given me an error to say that group uh, test already begins uh, already exists and that's fine it's telling me uh, that what I'm going to be doing is replacing an existing group so we're going to go ahead and untick our uh, group points here and instead we're going to change it to keep by normal and this is on our second group node that we've created and the reason why we've named it the same is because we're going to go through the process of some of these merging uh, functions so let's say uh, that we want to keep all of our points that are facing upwards in Y so we can see that if we turn our point normals on uh, and we can scroll this down a little bit so that we can see which ones are facing upwards all right now we initially had our group test which was all of these um, uh, selected by unshared edges all of these points and we now have our group test the same name but selected on everything that's pointing up in Y so what it's done is it's replaced our initial group so we no longer have any of those those grouped points that were in our uh, unshared edges but we can go ahead and change this to union and now what we're going to see is we've got points that weren't initially in our uh, in our unshared points group so say this one right on the top here but because they were a part of our group by normal they have been union uh, merged with that initial group we also have the option to intersect so any that uh, that equal both of our groups any that are both pointing in Y and are unshared will be grouped so that's this top selection here and lastly we have our subtract so we can remove any that were in our original selection uh, of unshared edges based on their direction their normal normal direction in Y